Hello everybody, this is Jess. One of the things we're going to talk about today is bits and bridles. We get asked it a lot, people are very overwhelmed, they go into the local tax stores and you know it's a big wall of bits. There's usually not a lot of great information about how to fit bits and ride in them and what they're for so they feel a little overwhelmed. So one of the things I believe is that you don't need a ton of bits. Three bits I can get a horse fully broke up to where I want them to be. I don't tell my wife that because I have a corner full of bits and that's kind of my hobby is I collect them. I really like them and for me I'm trying to fit multiple horses with different size mounts. So the first bit I think everybody should always have, um, I ride all my two year olds in them, is one of these twisted, twisted snaffle bits. So a snaffle refers to the one break in the middle of the mouthpiece. So this one's a D-ring. I like these ones a lot. I've rode in them for years. Um, a family down in New Mexico makes them, Dutton's. This one here is glued steel, copper wrapped, sorry, copper twisted, rigged up with leather curb straps and a German martingale. So, the reason I like these bits so much is I want to start them. I don't want to get them used to if I'm pulling on a smooth snaffle. They take their face, they run their jaw across that smooth snaffle and they don't care. I want them to understand they have to give to a bit from the very first time I put them in their mouth. These aren't severe if you use them properly. You don't have to pull as hard, you just pull once, pull solid till they give, let go and it works. All my snaffles, I'm a very traditional person, all my snaffles for head stalls always have brow bands and throat latches so them colts can't scratch them off. And the other thing when you pull on a snaffle is it'll lift up in that horse's mouth. Now, if you only have a, a one-eared head stall on, they'll come up and sometimes they come off. We've seen people do that at shows they put a fancy show head stall on, doesn't work. So this is my first one, my go-to every time. I ride my two-year-olds in these, I go back to it whenever I have a problem and I'm just not getting it communicated to my horse properly. I always go back to this snaffle and I can hold on to them, I can pull on them. And if they move their jaw side to side, it's rough enough that they don't like that. So they're gonna try to hold their head still in the bridle and give to me. That definitely gets the most use in our farm. Once they've graduated out of a twisted wire, twisted snaffle, I usually go up to one of these. They're called one by one correction bits. So the one by one refers to one inch high, one inch wide. Correction refers to the two brakes. The reason I like these is because there's a little different pull with a shank and I believe that if it's a shank snaffle and one break, it comes too high, it hits the top of their mouth and it'll cause them horses to gape their mouths a lot. I like the double, it sits on the side of the bars of their mouth and you can hold them in as you like. I don't use a real big shank. You know, when I graduate them up, this one here, just a couple inches long. And one thing I do is I leave my curb straps really loose when I first put these on. This one here is what's called a logging chain curb strap. There's many different versions of those, but I like these for myself. It just, I get along with them. This one here is rigged up with just a one-eared head stall because it's a shank bit. One of the reasons I like this is it's not super complicated. When I pull that sits on their mouth, similar to a snaffle, I want to pull on this bar first before I get to the curb strap. And then as the horse gets a little more broke and, I, and they understand that when I lift my rein, I'm gonna pull them and they have to give to it, I'll shorten this up so that the, the first advanced warning is a little less. Um, all of my head stalls and reins, I absolutely hate steel snaps on mine. They're all with water loop. This is the lacing, it's called water loops. Um, I don't like steel, there's too many bouncy things on there and I've had people have them break, there's just too much going on. I love water loops and that's a personal preference. 
So there's two of the bits. The third bit that I always like to have is a solid bar bit. And this one here is a, has a port and then they welded into it a little bit of a spade on top or a spoon. And this bit here has a solid shank on it. There's no give to it like the one by one had. That I don't feel is as important as this mouthpiece here has no give. There's no breaks in here. So what I like about this bit is wherever I set my hands, the horse has to stay straight behind that bar of that mouth. So if I set my hands there, that's where he stays. If that bit is a little bent to the side, that's where he's gonna stay. With this bit, if my horse is bent when I'm showing, it's usually a problem that I made, not the bit. He's trying to find where he's behind that. I do like a lot of my customers to have a loose shank down here, so there's just a little bit of give. Doesn't have as hard a bump as this bit does. This has been a favorite of mine for a very long time. These, these bits here, once I get them to the point of showing, I like how horses stay straight in them. Now, one of the things we're gonna discuss just a little bit, and we're gonna discuss it more because I'm gonna do some videos on, just on snaffles. You know, there's lots of different kinds what we show in and whatnot. Millions of different correction bits and the same with these quarter bits. Now this one here, everybody will always say it's pretty high. Shouldn't ride in them, they're high. It's a very big misconception. This one here, if you notice, is tipped back quite a bit in this angle. So that sits against the top of the mouth and it's similar to taking like a spoon, flipping it upside down, putting it against the roof of your mouth. It does not hurt, it sits against there. Now if you turn that spoon the opposite way and just the edge of it, that hurts. That's why I like them bent back instead of straight up. What this does is that horse balance against this point at the top of his mouth, this at the bottom of his mouth, and that gives me two points so that my leverage comes up on it. There's a lot about that that a, a lot of people don't understand so they right away go to you know they don't like it or they do when they ride in them and the good ones not the cheap versions the good the good bits and they ride in them properly people really do appreciate it now this one here is rigged up with plain leather rein same thing water loops this one has what's called a power curb so this one's for a fairly advanced older horse it has a fair bit of bite there so that them older horses when we go to show them, if they're getting a little old and tired, we can fix that. Um, one of the things we do is we switch them around a lot. Like this one here has a you know nice flat leather curb strap, um, more of like a cow horse curb strap. Um, and then this one's maybe a little lower in here so people can go how they like into there. Same thing, this one has fairly rigid shanks, but it's a solid mouthpiece. Those three bits, I can get everything I want accomplished. I can have a horse good on the bars, like a snaffle bit horse. I can have them really good side to side in the corrections and fairly good going. And then very straight when I want them to be one handed or in, in the leather reins or ramels. And I can straighten them up into there and show them quite well. And then every horse, when I show them, will tell me what they want. If I have one that's fairly wiggly, get side to side, they go to one of these bits here. If one wants to be maybe a little stiff on the sides, I can go into those corrections. So with those three bits, is a majority of what our whole program focuses around, and anybody can get along with just three. Thank you.